Hello and welcome to the Virgo channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Laura and I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Now that energy is fluid, roles could be reversed. Always interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know on this channel, I like to dive deep. So we do look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and we see how they play out as karmic themes within your experience. So if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you have to be open to getting a shadow reading. You need to like the video subscribe to the channel and write the word of the video in your comment bar. I hope that this is not going to freeze the whole time. Otherwise, I'm really annoyed. And I don't want to be really annoyed. So maybe that means something. I feel like someone's connected to somebody that every time they're supposed to like be able to come towards you or that they're going to come towards you, they they like freeze. They freeze. And then it's like another delay. So I feel like you're you, like, again, that's going to come out somehow. Something. Someone does not feel good about what they've done. And because they don't, they're overthinking. And the problem is, is that they're torn between the head and their heart, right? That's what I think is going on. Okay, let's see what that word of the video is. Okay, the word of the video is blame. Blame. You're going to write the word in your comment box. So I feel like obviously you would blame them for why you're not talking to them. This person it was, I think, planning on coming to you to be like, hey, long time stranger. Like, you know, almost like I didn't do anything. Like I didn't do all that. And um, the thing is that they can tell by your stance that that's not going to fly. So the way that they used to deal with people, they can't deal with you in that same manner. So it's almost like this person wants to come towards you, but they can't really justify how they were. So let's see exactly how they were. Let's see how they were. Insecure. So again, I feel like acted childish. Um, like needing attention from too many other people, needing attention from too other too many other people. So not being emotionally intelligent, not being open to you but running around and talking to like anybody and anybody. And I feel like this person didn't really even hide it that well. Again, creating illusions, illusions, and those illusions is, oh, I'm so desirable. I'm so important. I can have anyone. And also like that you were not, that they, that they didn't have as strong a connection to you as well as, um, trying to make you not feel as confident about yourself. So this person tried to create a lot of illusions for you, just a toxic relationship. And then like always in search for, for someone else, always looking for someone else, always looking to fulfill themselves somehow, whether it was with drink, whether it was with food, whether it was something that this person feels empty. But they don't have good relationships. What they have is, I wanna say like fan club, like people that like are on a lower vibration, on a very low vibration that look up to this person because they buy into the illusions of what they create because they don't feel good about themselves. They feel inadequate. They don't feel good enough. And that happens from inner child wounds. So let's see, actually, because they pretty much did everything. That's what it looks like. This person has very addictive behavior. It's like they need attention from someone. They don't, they feel, first of all, they feel inadequate. So they will always look for something outside of themselves to fill themselves. Always in search for the next fill. The next conquest because of their trauma. There's unresolved 
trauma. I mean, and but really, I feel like within you, it's like all you really asked for was accountability. This person never takes accountability ever. And I think that that's the only thing that you pretty much ask for. Apologize, take accountability. But I feel that this person wasn't allowed to like grow up as a, as a kid. You know what I mean? Like they were expected to be perfect. So they're not allowed to, they weren't like, they weren't allowed to show any sort of weakness and any type of emotion was seen as weakness. So this person doesn't take accountability because they were kind of taught not to. And I feel like when they did, there wasn't praise for it. What the person got was berated. They were made fun of. They were made to feel like they were weak, that, you know, that there was something wrong with them, that they were defective. So this person overcompensates within their behaviors when they get around people that they like. And the way that they overcompensate, they really can't maintain. It's like they'll, they'll spend a lot of money to make it appear that they're rich. They'll do certain things to make a person think certain things, but none of those things are really this person. This person feels inadequate. And that's what happens when we're, in, we're growing up and we're being told that there's something wrong with us right away. And that's what I kind of feel like happened with, with the person that you're connected to. So they don't take accountability and it's because of major trauma. Now we're gonna ask how that triggered you. Let's ask. Okay. Let's ask how it triggered you. Made you feel alone. Obviously. Um, this person didn't give anything. I you felt like you never I got the apology, and that's what I said before. <clears throat> and it triggered your abandonment issue. And because like you, you didn't grow up perfect. Um, I feel like um, like th this is the thing. It's like, I feel like when your person would get just out of balance or want something, because this person lives very much by their addictions, which are their emotions. And when the person doesn't feel good, they continually need to do these things to raise their energy. They're not aware that they, this is what they do. But what they would do to you is that when I feel angry and irritated, I will start an argument, like if not soothed. So it's like, it was almost like your fault if anything went wrong, if anything like, like this person, like, um, any sign of weakness, any, any sort of feeling inadequate, like it makes this person really irritated because they already feel that way about themselves. So it's almost like you're made to feel as if you need to fix it. It's like, that's the, like, that's what they do to make you not feel comfortable, to make you not feel comfortable, which I feel like that's how you grew up. You grew up with a parent that like was, like not really emotionally intelligent they were overly emotional and they didn't really know how to handle their emotions so when they got irritated if they didn't get enough sleep if they didn't you know whatever it was that would irritate this person they would start an argument in order to for them to get sued it's a very manipulative thing that happens there it's like because you don't realize that you're being conditioned to like become subservient to a person because you just don't want to deal with it. And so I feel like that, that if the abandonment, obviously if you always have to be on alert to give to a parent because that's the way that they are. Well, then what are your needs being met by your parent? No, 
it's like, so they might have been there, but they couldn't really be there. And so it's almost like the same dynamic that I'm feeling that just, again, like you, you're, you're not coming towards me because you're afraid that I'm going to blame you. But really, I never got an apology. So obviously, you just want to skip all, all over that part. You want to pretend that that didn't happen so that you don't have to uh, make me feel bad. Like, I mean, that you don't have to feel bad about yourself. So it means that I have to lower my standards. That's almost the dynamic here, Virgo, that this person like expected. And it, that's what, of course, that's what they expect because they hang out with low by people that don't expect don't feel that they deserve anything or they but they want so they try to manipulate to get it so they'll you know be this person's fan club but no one wants to be anyone's fan club it's like those people are users too Yeah, and then they saw you as like being fragile. It's like, oh, you're being overly sensitive. You're being overly sensitive where it's like, it's like, no, I'm not being overly sensitive. Again, being made to feel as if you need to become somebody different to accommodate this person. And this person isn't even aware that that's what they do. But we see all through this story this person doesn't know who they are and they manipulate in order to be soothed, no matter what it is. And I said, they live by their addictions and they're not aware. And that's what happens when people have shadows and they don't heal those shadows. It doesn't feel good. It makes you feel very lethargic and tired. And that's not our natural energy. Our natural energy is unconditional love, where you are full of energy. You are full of vivacious energy that is, that goes out into the universe and attracts, you know, love, other forms of love. You know, that's what you're made to be. Not, again that but that's what happens like they said when a person doesn't heal they begin to live more from their mind the reptilian mind which is a survival mind which is very ego and doesn't care about anyone else but in order for that ego to to be fed it literally needs to be fed with something to to like like to uh to soothe it because otherwise this person would be raging all the time. So of course, they're going to see you as fragile from their perception because they're really out of balance. So they don't feel their emotions. So why are you even feeling your emotions? So again, they, they, they have feelings for you, but from this ego reptilian place in their mind where they just want to like control. And then it's like, I feel like, both of you at this point are like neither one is doing anything but it's mainly you are virgo or like this person's just too slow to act they don't it's like they're always doing something and then sitting there and waiting for a response and then when they don't get that response they'll stay procrastinate because they're like well i don't want to be blamed i don't want to really be and so really the entire relationship is just this is what I see. Just craziness, like the, where this person doesn't even really, I feel like, look at you as a human being. They look at you as a piece of property where they can treat you however they want, but it's not because like that it's because that's the way that they were programmed that's the way that they were programmed and they never got therapy and they never got any healing for it and they went into every single relationship and did this so with each relationship that no one wants to be in this people try and it, when you try you ruin your life and then so i feel like this person like leaves a slew of people that are on a low vibration behind that actually have given time, given energy to try and help them. And so with you, of course, they they 
they see a high vibration. They they want that. The ego wants that. You know, the ego is the wants anything that's gonna let them feel better about themselves and look better. So it's again, but in that they don't, they're not genuine about it because their ego is running the show. So we have to ask ourselves why, because it's like they're slow to act. So I feel like this is what it's going to be. Will this person come back? They'll come back, but it's like, it's, this is, it's going to be more of the same. That's what spirit is saying. And it's mainly because they haven't done healing. It's just easier for them to go out and meet somebody else and pretend to be this person that has money, that's successful, that they, you know, you can be whoever you want. And then because they, they know that they're not sticking around, they know that, you know, there's only one of you. It's not like this person like didn't have any feelings. I just feel like their, their feelings for you are not stronger than their addictions and their, and, and really their shadows. So we have to say, when you attract a person like this, you already know from a little bit in the reading that it came through, because I would be like, why the hell would you attract someone like this that's so imbalanced? And it's because you grew up with that. And what you were taught was at first, there is a spiritual connection. There is unconditional love because of that spiritual connection. Spiritual connections transcend time and space. You know, this person in the past, like they played somebody else. They didn't have all these spiritual wounds in a past life. For all you know, you might have had all those spiritual wounds in a past life. But the soul recognizes and they try to to come together again to to work out the spiritual lessons it's like this person couldn't do it it's so again you'll meet again in another life my point is is that you recognize this person they recognized you it's a past life karmic there's love there it's like but only God loves perfect. When a person is wounded, they form behaviorisms and habits of the sort their perceptions about who they are. And then they live from that perception. But in so, they have formed many behaviorisms and many habits that are sabotaging. And that's what we see with this person. It's because they never get the healing. And we don't talk about that in our society. So again, they look really nice on the outside, but they need a tremendous amount of healing. So again, support, you didn't have support. Support is, I would say, like that mothering and that fathering energy, right? Um, mother it symbolizes nurturing. And I feel like you didn't have that. And I feel like you didn't really have support either because your father, some of your, your parents were alcoholics, some of them were just not available. They they had addictive behavior. And that was either drinking too much, you know, womanizing, gambling. Again, they were avoidant. So in that, you didn't get the support that you needed. But we always have to love mother and father. We're supposed to honor mother and father. And that's hard to do. It's really hard to do when when you've gotten hurt, when you've been traumatized, because these people, you know, as a child, we all put them on a pedestal. We think that, you know, we want our parents to love us. And then when they're not there and they don't show up and they do the exact opposite of what a parent's supposed to do, when we, we become wounded and we take them into relationships, but we do so because we become a magnet to those traumas. So I feel like you, again, at least have done healing. So you became your own support. And because you became your own support, you're at a higher vibration because that shows that you love yourself enough to take care of yourself regardless of whatever happened in your childhood. You didn't let that affect you. And you still want 
certain things. And so I feel like with this person, they're like, um, they took they in a way they taught you what unconditional love is, because everybody has a deity part of self, which is that God part of self. And everybody, when they grow up in the type of environment that you grew up in, well, they wouldn't know what unconditional love was because they were taught very selfish love like this person. So it's it's to be able to see the same situation through a different perception and still uh, and to ha have still have unconditional love for the people, not their habits, not their deeds. Hope. I feel like you found your hope in, in just the fact that you love yourself and you do what you need to for yourself and to go out and date. That means that you're hopeful that it can happen. So just because this incident happened doesn't mean that every single other incident is going to happen. It means that you integrated the spiritual lesson and that, that meaning that you chose yourself. I feel as if the only type of relationships that this person gets in are codependent. And I feel that that was the type of environment that you grew up in. And so even if your dad walked out, they, your parent, parent that didn't have might have been codependent on another sibling, might have been codependent on something else, whether it was addiction, a person, a thing, they didn't feel whole. And to be a little bit rebellious. I mean, I think that when you were growing up, you were seen as rebellious because you were different. Or for some of you, you guys weren't at all. You were exact opposite. And that you had to become a little bit rebellious in choosing yourselves. Because we grew up in an environment where um, there was addiction and a parent is, you know can't emotionally regulate to the point that they can't really function well and after a certain amount of time you would have to become rebellious in the fact that you'd have to choose yourself because you'd see the boat is you know sinking so you know you can't help anyone on that boat unless you help yourself so that would be seen as rebellious because of, you know, I have hope, I have hope for a better life. And that sometimes just comes from like your innate will, meaning that spirit part of yourself, that God part of yourself, that internal knowing where you were like, I know that there's something better out there for myself, even though I'm not being supported. I know I can have a better life and that's going to be seen as rebellious because you're not playing the role that everybody wants you to play which is miss fix it it's like you said not today and but then because of that trauma of being taught that unconditional love came with it with, with uh with i want to say regulations right because they came with like a uh, discrepancies God says, that was not my love. My love is perfect. There's no ownership. There's no expectation. It just is. That's how you know that it's real. Because you don't really want anything for it. You just love the person regardless of whatever they show you. Regardless of what they look like. Regardless of, and I feel like you didn't, you didn't have that. Like, or you didn't feel as if you had that Virgo. And that's why you attracted this person. Because they kind of mimicked a lot of the same things. So we asked Spirit, what energy can we pull in to, I mean, we already passed the spiritual uh, test, but what other energy can we integrate to make ourselves feel a little bit better at this time? 
Well, what else should we look at at this time? Positive thinking. My life is full of small patches of light. I direct my thoughts to that which brings me well-being. I place what is worthy and weighty for me into the hands of the universe. Little by little, the light awakens in my being and I find serenity. So again, if you grew up in an environment that was really imbalanced, it's hard to think positively because you were conditioned to see all the imperfections of life. And if you're someone that's highly sensitive, which it wouldn't be uncommon if you grew up in that environment, um, because as a young child, you knew you had to fend for yourself and that's a survival mechanism. Um, you, you would be, again, have lived a lot of experiences too where they were unfair or the same karmic themes of what you grew up in, which I, as I said, I feel like wouldn't be fair, maybe even a little bit bullying, having people not treat you um the way that you deserve, as I was saying, and then just not being able to manifest your experiences because of that energy that you came from. And spirit says, you can do anything. All you need to do is have positive thinking, direct your thoughts on what you love, on who you love, do what you love, become yourself, and do so by keeping your thoughts positive it's like because spirit says and i do the rest that's your spiritual sovereignty your spiritual sovereignty is that you can do anything is that it's that's the law of attraction it's your thoughts and your emotions so a lot of times we're unconscious of our words and so what spirit is saying is just positive thinking especially it's that's difficult when we're going up against challenges and we weren't taught how to deal with stress and so spirit's also saying it's just not the positive thinking maybe do a little like breath work and grounding work to be in the moment because in that you get the good connection to source and then you're able to get that divine guidance that you so well need in the now. And you're then co-creating with the divine to create the life and the life experiences that you want. Instead of, you know, listening to things of the past or having those things of the past replay within your life. That's the way you recondition yourself from growing up in an environment that was imbalanced, that again, and now you're living the consequences. And we live the consequences again by attracting the type of people into our life and having situations that really not happen for us or certain experiences that we don't want to happen happen for us where you don't feel like we have any control over our life. The spirit says, you always have control over your life because the divine lives inside of you. So as long as you ground and you keep your thoughts positive, well, then your emotions and your actions are going to follow those positive thoughts and you will be able to manifest the experiences that you want. And that was just a test that you passed. So congratulations, Virgo. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.